In this video, you will be shown the appointment management processes. This will include how to schedule a new patient appointment, um, how to schedule a follow-up, as well as how to modify an appointment. For a new appointment, um, that this is a referral that has been newly triaged within the system, uh, we would do this process within PM Office. To load up your new appointment waiting lists, this would be under your published waiting list band and within BTHFT appointment to be scheduled. Selecting this, you would then need to drop down to the speciality that you wish to book a new patient appointment for and that will populate under the current values. So as soon as you press OK, it will load up all of the patients still waiting for a new appointment to be scheduled. You can also see how long the patient has been waiting for, as well as checking that you have the correct patient. Once you right click onto the patient you wish to schedule an appointment for, you can see it will highlight the patient in blue and you would simply drop down to schedule. By selecting schedule, it will automatically open a scheduling appointment book also abbreviated to chat book. Um, but within scheduling appointment book, the first thing is the diary screen, which is just located at the bottom of the screen. Currently, this is blank because we haven't specified any information to the system. Um, we can see by the calendar that we are currently looking at today's date of the 23rd of September, but you are able to change the date the diary is focusing on by just selecting from the calendar here. We also have an appointment tab. By using the appointment tab and filling in the yellow mandatory fields, as soon as we populate this information and move this, so it is a work in progress, which means that we are then in the progress of booking an appointment, it will then open the diary at the bottom. So to begin with, I am going to start typing in the speciality for the appointment that I am booking. Um, a lot of specialities are abbreviated within the system. So I'm not going to write cardiology as a whole. I'm just going to write card. And as soon as I press enter, it will then load up with all of the matching clinics within cardiology. For training purposes, I'm going to book this patient into a general cardiology new clinic. So I'm going to scroll down until I find just the word cardio and then new. Uh, but this will be dependent on your own speciality and your own speciality processes, as well as which clinic the clinician has wanted to book the patient into. As soon as I press um, OK for that one, it then takes me through to the next mandatory field, which is entering which location the patient needs to come into for this appointment. So again, this will depend on your own department processes and where these clinics are held. Cardiology is generally held at St. Luke's, so I'm going to select Adult OPD SLH. Uh, but note that we do also have the outreach clinics as well, which are usable as well if it is necessary based on the clinician's instructions. Um, if there is any further mandatory fields, you can scroll down to find these. We've also got a schedule with. So coming back to the referral details, if the referral details or if the clinician has triaged the patient and it needs to go with a particular clinician, uh, you would be able to set, select lead clinician at this stage. Um, I've left mine as a pooled referral, so it's a pooled consultant referral, um, so the patient can be scheduled with anyone who has the first available appointment. This is all of the mandatory information, but you do have scheduling comments at the bottom, so follow your own department processes um, at this stage. But I am going to click move, and what the move will do is take everything in my appointment tab, and it will move this information to a work in progress. So you can see it's pulled across the patient's name, the location of the, um, where we want the appointment to be booked for. And as we do this, it will then open the diary at the bottom. So for today's date, 
any field that is showing in yellow are I, our new appointments. And if I was to scroll down, if there is any follow-up appointments, um, these would show up as blue. So it appears at the moment all of these are just new appointment slots. Um, but as I scroll right down to the bottom, they then turn blue. Um, so these are all of our follow-ups. Uh, the system does recognise if the patient is a new or a follow-up. So if I did attempt to take one of the follow-up slots, the system would prevent me from doing so. You can see um, which slots have already been taken by a patient. So I'm just going to find the first available slot, which is available. And I can simply highlight that and go through to schedule. So I can see my patient now showing up there. So when it's in a salmon colour, this is just a provisional booking. Um, the idea of this is to give you the opportunity to contact the patient and confirm if the date and time is OK uh, before we go through to confirm it. By provisionally booking, it will prevent anybody from taking that slot unless you re release it. Uh, but I'm going to confirm this appointment now. Can send a letter out to the patient, but I am in training, so I'm going to pop no for that. And that will then change this to a confirmed appointment. Now, um, the diary, uh, if you're using the system for the first time, as soon as an appointment is confirmed, it will close your diary down. If you do wish to change that setting, uh, you can do so coming to your view toolbar, come into your options. And you do have a confirm tab and this will give you the ability to maintain focus on the last confirmed appointment. So next time when I do click the confirm, it won't close the diary down as it just did with me. So I'm going to do that for the next um, process. So the next uh, process that we want to show is how to schedule a follow up appointment. So to do this, we have waiting lists within scheduling appointment book. Um, and we have what is a called appointment inquiry, which looks like an I. Um, and then next to this, we've got a request list inquiry. Um, so your request list inquiry is actually your waiting list. But if I come into the appointment inquiry, you do also have several tabs within here. And you do have your request list inquiry located in here as well. Um, if I just close out of this a second, if you went into just the request list inquiry, you won't have all of the other tab options available to you. Um, so with the appointment inquiry, this just gives you the ability to search for a patient individually. Um, if you wanted to search for the patient's history, for example, um, you can also load up uh, clinics by resource, which is the clinician, or by location, such as Hart and Wing. Uh, but I am showing you guys how to schedule a follow-up appointment. So I'm going to come to the request list. And for an outpatient follow-up, your inquiry, um, you will need to drop this down to be scheduled, not the third one. So let me just correct that. Um, so to be scheduled, and once you've got it on to be scheduled, you would then drop the request list queues. Now, this will show every waiting list um, used by the entire trust. Uh, so as you can see, this is quite a long list of all of the different waiting lists. Um, so for cardiology, for example, following the speciality I am demonstrating, um, we've got a waiting list for ward attenders. So this is if the patient needed to go to a ward. Um, for an outpatient appointment, um, so for example, bloods. Um, below this, we have the general cardiology waiting list, which is where we will see all of our outpatient appointment follow-up waiting list entries. Uh, we've got some for outreach, which is our Addingham. Um, so this is just clinics held outside of the hospital. Um, and then we've also got one for day case procedures for, day, uh, for cardiology. Coming to the general cardiology list as soon as I press find it will load up with all of the waiting lists for patients waiting for a follow-up appointment um, now at this point as soon as you right click on the patient you wish to schedule an appointment for 
and um, you will have the schedule option. Uh, but just to mention, if I just scroll along to the right hand side slightly, um, you would be able to check what appointment type the patient has been requested to come back for. Um, but what we should also be um, following the processes of is the urgency of the appointment. So we need to be recognising if the patient is an urgent patient or if they are just a general routine. Um, now, um, I, I can see the column there, sorry. So we've, these are all routine patients. Uh, but if I did have any that were showing up as urgent at this stage, I would be able to bring these to the top. Um, coming to referral to treatment pathways as well, we do also need to be following uh, the patients that are still being monitored. So anybody that's still being monitored, they still haven't had uh, their treatment, so they do take priority. Uh, whereas follow-up patients, some of these follow-up patients may have already received their treatment, uh, so they're no longer a priority. So again, you would sort them in RTT order, but uh, again, following the processes within your own teams um, and ask management for support if you need this. Uh, but I'm going to come and right click and go down to schedule. So for follow up appointments, um, it will automatically populate your appointment tab so you can verify everything is correct. Uh, but based on the appointment type that was requested by the clinician, uh, which you will actually be able to see within the waiting list if I just scroll back along, um, there is a column which details the type of appointment that's been requested. Um, so because this has already been entered by the clinician and specified, it will automatically fill that in in the appointment tab, so you shouldn't need to change anything. So this is automatically a work in progress as well. Um, if there is any um, appointment slots missing, it could just be that there's no clinic on that day. So I'm going to come to today's day. I can see that we do have some clinics on for today. Um, again, fields in yellow are our new slots. So I'm going to come down and we don't have any follow ups. So I'm going to go through to the following Wednesday. So, um, again, make sure you follow in your own uh, department processes as to whether or not this is a clinic that you are allowed to book into. Uh, so ask your management for guidance. Uh, but once you've found the follow-up slot uh, for the clinic you wish to book for, I'm going to highlight that and simply schedule. It will ask to confirm the time and the duration. And because I've selected an actual time slot, um, it should automatically fill all of that information for me. So you just triple check that the information is correct based on what you've selected and press OK. Now, it could potentially come up with this in the um, in, in live when you are scheduling appointments. Now, some people are quick to override this, uh, but do make sure that you are reading these pop ups. So what this is actually warning me is based on what the clinician requested, he wanted to be able to see this patient um, between the 17th of November and the 24th of November. Now, I am in a training environment, uh, but if it was to say this, let's say, in 2021, uh, so this would then be in the future, um, I should really be cancelling that um, and making sure that I'm actually scheduling this for November, as the clinician had requested. Um, alternatively, if you have had to book the patient in, in what is known as a breach, uh, this means that we have not been able to schedule the, the patient within the specified time period and you've got permission to book the patient in breach from the clinician and the secretary, you can override this. So again, it's provisionally booked that appointment for me, so all I need to do now is confirm and send the letter out to the patient. But again, I'm training, so I'm going to put no. As soon as I press OK, that is my follow-up appointment scheduled. Now remember how I changed my view options to maintain focus on the last confirmed appointment. So now when I press confirm this time, as you can see, it has kept me 
in my diary. Now, if you needed um, to amend the appointment for any reason, so it could be the patient wishes to cancel or the hospital needs to um, change the appointment, uh, you can come back into your appointment inquiry and this time you would need your person tab. And I'm going to drop my inquiry down to standard patient inquiry. Now, because I have actually just done something within Susan, it has populated her automatically. Uh, but I can click on this icon here, which will load up with the patient search window for you to find a different patient if necessary. Uh, but then we need to fill in the start date. So if I wanted, for example, to see the patient's past appointments, I can take this back. By leaving the end date blank, it will search for any appointments as far in the future as needed. But as soon as I press find, it will then load up with the appointments. Now, in order to modify these, you simply right click and if I select reschedule, this will automatically take me through to the diary. It will ask me if I want to retain the current active encounter, which you should always be clicking yes to that. And I would then be able to then reschedule. So let's say the patient's not available on the 29th. So I'm going to take that through to the 6th instead. And schedule. Confirm that everything is correct. I'm going to have to override this and then confirm. Now, at this point, because this is a reschedule, um, I've got some mandatory fields to populate at this point. So I'm just pressing OK to take me through. So is it the patient that's initiated this? Yes or no. So do make sure that this is correct. Uh, so the patient isn't getting penalised because uh, if the patient does um, cancel a new appointment, for example, uh, twice, they do get discharged. So do make sure that that is actually correct. So yes or no for the patient. Um, and then the reason for the reschedule, so I'm going to say um, results unavailable at the clinic. So as soon as I press OK, it will then ask for the reschedule options. So never leave comments blank. Um, you should always, in every single situation, enter the comments here and press OK. So that is how to reschedule an appointment. Um, coming back to the standard patient inquiry, um, I can see that change of appointment listed here now. And if I scroll along, I can check the scheduled date and time. Another option is to cancel the appointment. So do you wish to send a letter to the patient? Yes or no. Um, again, you will have mandatory fields, but it will always prompt you to fill those in. So it's asking, is the patient initiating this? Reason for the cancellation. Outcome. So do we wish to see the patient again? Or is the patient being completely discharged? Uh, so this could be used in a situation where the results have come back, the results are clear, um, and we don't actually need to see the patient anymore. Uh, so we could discharge the patient and remove them from the referral to treatment pathway. But I am going to say that we do wish to see the patient again, so we do need to keep the clock ticking. So I'm going to say clock continues and press OK, and that appointment is all cancelled. So any modifications that you need to do will just be in here. Um, I can undo that cancellation as well if I needed to.